Hey guys, welcome back. I just wanted to thank some of the new subscribers. I noticed that our numbers started to go up a little bit now that I've been posting a little more consistently. So just thank you right off the bat. Today I want to get into seven ways to get through a creative funk. I think that this is something that we all go through, especially at the end of the season. Right now it's January, but sometimes around October, November, we start to feel a little burnt out. Um, we start to feel like, you know, everything that we're doing is just, it's not as exciting to you or the excitement that was there when you start out with photography, just you don't feel that little spark. For example, when I started photography and I started shooting with off-camera lighting, it changed the way that I looked at scenes. Everywhere that I walked around, I would see the way that you can manipulate and you can add lighting in order to make it look how you want it to look. Um, it's not something that I throw around all the time now, like I'm a big fan now of natural light, but I like having that tool at my disposal in case I want to use it. When you have new things and you're learning new things, especially in the beginning, it you do have a little bit more excitement because everything feels new and fresh. Once you've been doing it for a few years, you kind of have to find an area or something to kind of re-spark that sometimes. And that's what I want to go into today. So if you're feeling a little frustrated or you feel like you're going through a little bit of a funk, let me give you some tips that perhaps can help you guys out to get that excitement back. So the first one that I put is looking at your previous work. And the reason I put that, I put critique your previous work, but as I'm thinking about it, I kind of want to say a critique it and b when you look at your previous work it's very likely that you're going to start looking at it and going oh shit you know what it like this isn't this is actually pretty good you know what i mean because when you're shooting you feel that excitement when you're shooting and i think that sometimes it goes away because you forget what those feelings were like when you were doing it so when you start looking at your previous work it could either a inspire you because you go oh you know this is this is pretty sweet or b you can look at it and go okay this is where i could improve this is where i could have shot this a little bit better you know what, I have a free afternoon on Tuesday, let me go out and shoot this, or you know, if, if that's a, a possibility, let me go out and shoot some variation of this that's better than what I have in front of me. So that's also a little side thing that I always tell our shooters is, as you're shooting, look at your work, critique your work in the back of your LCD, and then fix it right in front of you. So if you have a couple, you take a few photos and you tell, hey guys, hold on one second, you look at your photos and you go, okay, if this was somebody else's work, what would I tell them to do? And then do that. So in that same light, look at your previous work, see where you could improve, and then go out and do it. Because nobody is stopping you. I understand we all have a lot of things to do, and I know time is a limited resource, but if you care about this, if you wanna kinda keep pushing forward, find the time to go out and just experiment. Sometimes it could be as easy as going out in your backyard and just trying something different. The other thing that I noted is look at other people's work. So whether it's on social media, whether it's on photography websites, I know back in the day like 500px and back, back in the day, <laughs> Flickr was a thing. So, you know, we used to look, when I lived in New York, we used to look at cool locations like in upstate New York which was like two or three hours away from us that were pretty cool. And we're like, oh, you know what? Let's go check that location out. So we would save it for that weekend, go up and go and shoot around on the weekends. It was me and like two or three of my friends. And that's what we would do. You know what I mean? It's not, nobody was paying us to do anything. Nobody was telling us we had to do it. We were doing it because it was something that was cool and inspiring to us. And that's kind of the point of that is look at other people's work whether it's portraits, whether it's landscapes, whether it's something, you may pick up one thing out of there that makes you go, oh shoot, I want to go and try that and then go out and try it because you never know what that one thing that you try that afternoon that five years down the line you're shooting a job and you go you know what i experimented with this little technique let me implement that right now and now you're giving this couple something that was maybe from a completely different genre and now you're putting it into the work that you're doing now that you're being paid to do or whatever the case or even if it's just for fun just having that extra skill in your arsenal is going to help you down the line so look at other people's work whether it's colleagues, social media, just anything at all, immerse yourself. So that's kind of number two, which kind of goes in line with number three, which is go for a photo walk. So this is different than another one that I'm gonna say down the line, but go for a photo walk. For example, some of the photos that you're seeing right now scrolling through was when Tamron originally sent over the 35 to 150 millimeter. And I walked around downtown LA after I did a photo shoot and I was just shooting locations that I remember from Fight Club. So if you guys remember that movie from the late 90s, that's what I did. I Googled where were some of the scenes from Fight Club filmed, and then I walked around. And I was shooting stuff that I had seen on film, and I'm like, this is really freaking cool. You know what I mean? Like, I had done a job, and that was fun. I mean, I was still enjoying that, but then I went, what else can I do that's something different? And I walked around, and 
that is a really cool idea. If you live in a, in a major city, you have that options. Maybe a cool movie that you enjoyed was shot in a certain place. Walk around, you know, shoot some of that. There are endless amounts of subjects that you can shoot re literally within five, 10 minutes of wherever you live. So, and if you tell me that, no, my town is boring, I promise you, if we're here in LA and we went somewhere, let's say in the middle of the country, we're gonna find something that's cool about it because that's the opposite of what we have. So the grass is always greener. So get out there and find something cool. Go for a 20 minute photo walk and just shoot around. You'll find some inspiration in something, I promise you. You just have to get out of the house. That's that's a ma major key right there. And to segue off of that, one thing that one of, actually some of these, uh, one of our photographers, Joseph Montez, he's the one that mentioned, and I'm gonna link his work down below. So he's one of the um, persons that, when I asked the team on our chat, on our team chat, what would you guys recommend? Some of these were things that I had already written down and some of them were some things that Joseph mentioned. So this one specifically, cause he's very much about black and white in film. You can set your camera's profile to only shoot in black and white, one of the creative profiles. I think that, like that's such a cool thing to see the world in a black and white form. So you're not seeing it for color, you're seeing it for lighting, you're seeing it for shapes, you're seeing it for different things. And I'm actually gonna do this later and just shoot around in black and white, which gives you a different perspective. So that's something else. Shoot in a different profile in black and white and just go out and shoot around and, and see how different the world looks when you strip away the colors and play around with just black and white. Well, thank you for that, Joseph. I'm not joking, I'm actually gonna do that on that camera that's filming right now and go and play around later. So going off of that, if shooting color, which is something that we do a lot, is very much part of your repertoire, something that I wrote down, which is number five, shoot something that's outside of your typical genre. So if you're a portrait photographer, get out there and shoot some landscapes, shoot some cars, shoot if that's what you're into, shoot some, shoot anything that isn't, shoot macro, shoot something that's not within the realm of what you normally do, and you will find some inspiration in that. Not only that, you're gonna bring a different flavor to it that other people in that genre don't have. So it's a very cool way of expanding your horizons and trying something new and finding, you know, when you start immersing yourself in a certain genre, you start finding things that you didn't know about, which is the best part because you can put that all together and make it your style later on. So for example, if you look at our work on our Instagram, you see that it's all portraits, it's all weddings, it's all people, it's all that. But there are times where I'll just go out and I'll shoot some landscapes or I'll shoot some macro photography or, you know, I'll photograph my dogs. I didn't say shoot my dog, you see that? And, and a lot of the times I'm shooting with my phone, to be honest. There's a lot of times when I'm out and it's, these phones are just ridiculous. So if the excuse is I don't have a professional camera, get your phone because I promise you the iPhone 12 Pro, which I have is 10 times better than the Nikon D70S that I started with. And if I was doing some cool stuff, at least I thought, back then, you can do it with your phone. So get out there, shoot something that's different than your genre and see how you enjoy it. Cause you may find something that you enjoy doing when you have downtime. So number six is going off of number three kind of, instead of going out for a photo walk, go out for just a regular walk. Go out for a run if you enjoy jogging. Go out and work out if you enjoy working out. What else did I put on here? Meet up with friends, have a beer with them, you know, have some, just get the hell out of your space. Because sometimes we get so enthralled with work and just what we're supposed to be doing that we forget that there's life outside of these walls. And I'm guilty of that as well. And when that starts to happen, you start, sometimes you start feeling a little bit of that creativity going away. You start feeling that imposter syndrome, I guess I would say. You know, I've been doing this for 17 years, so I'll be honest, like I feel like I, I have worked through these moments a lot more, so I don't feel them too much. But there are times where I go, God, like what should I post? Because everything just seems blah. But then I have to remember, and you guys have to remember this, that a lot of the people that follow you, a lot of the people that you may be inspiring, they've never seen a lot of the work that you've done. So start looking through your work, going back to number one. Start looking through your work and just see what else you have that may be different than what you what you think your scope of your work is. But the only way you're gonna do that is by clearing your mind and, and not be in that space. So get out of the house, go for a run. Nobody's, I personally believe, unless you jack something up at the gym, I've never gone to the gym and went, damn, I wish I didn't go. That's never happened. So get out of the house, go do something active, stop, thinking about it so much and eventually you'll get out of that funk. You, it's inevitable. 
So you can't force the creative bug to hit you. You can certainly massage it and do some of the things that I mentioned, but sometimes you just need to hit that pause button and just get out of the house and do something else. And last but not least, cause I don't like the number six, so I needed a seventh one, is if you normally, like I always shoot in manual mode all the time, manual white balance, manual everything. If you normally do that, one thing that you can do, and I, I will do this when I'm like on vacation or something like that, um, is put it into app amateur priority. That's what, was, that's what I always call it out, aperture priority. So put it in aperture priority and just get out and shoot. So it takes you out of being so technical and just capturing whatever's going on around you. Or the opposite way. If you only know how to shoot in automatic modes, put it to manual because that will challenge you. It will make you think and it will make you stop and slow down. And that's gonna create a different mind frame than what you normally shoot. Both of them will. So if you, like me, always shoot a manual, this is gonna change my thinking to be a little bit more loose and relaxed. If you're normally more on automatic modes and you go to manual, it's gonna make you slow down and think before you shoot and you know do all the, set all the numbers and do all that. Neither one is right or wrong, it's doing something that's different than what you normally do. So that's seven different ways to get out of your funk. If there's anything that you guys have done that has helped you in the past, leave a comment below, let us know, because I, if you guys notice, I always respond to comments. So let us know if there's anything you've done that has really re-sparked your creativity, and maybe I'll do a part two. Thank you guys so much for watching.